Kevin Costner jokes aside, astronomers are finding a lot of worlds that uh, look like they're completely covered in water, like there is no land masses at all. And so what would this cause for life? What would be the chances of there being life there? In fact, it's possible that in the Earth's ancient history, our entire planet had no continents. It was completely covered in water. So this episode, we're going to look at water worlds. One of the long standing questions astronomers have had is, are we normal? Is our solar system a template for what we might expect to see as we look out into the Milky Way at other star systems? As the data continue to come in, the answer to that question really seems to be no, we're not normal. Star systems seem to have a huge variety of planets orbiting them, familiar planets like our own terrestrial gas and ice worlds. But then there are super Earths, mini Neptunes and hot Jupiters. And it looks like there are planets located in their stars habitable zone, which are completely covered with liquid water, like oceans, which are dozens and maybe even hundreds or even thousands of kilometers deep. What would it be like to be on one of those worlds? And of course, we always want to know, could they be habitable? About 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. But if you could scoop up all the water and collect it into a single sphere, you'd end up with a ball of water that's about 1,385 kilometers across. That's about half the size of Pluto. It's about 1% the mass of asteroid Ceres. The universe, of course, has supplied us with an endless variety of planets out there that we can compare ourselves to. Of the 4,000 confirmed exoplanets found so far, many are right in the middle between Earth-sized worlds and larger Neptune-sized worlds. The problem is that most planets have only had their size measured and not their mass, which provides plenty of variety for what they could be made of. There's an intriguing idea that many of these worlds aren't gaseous at all, but actually made of mostly water surrounding a tiny rocky core. Back in September, astronomers announced that they had discovered water vapor in the atmosphere of an exoplanet, designated K218b, which is located in the habitable zone of its star. This planet isn't anything like we've got here in the solar system, with a mass of eight times that of Earth. This makes it a super Earth or a mini Neptune. And this was the first time that water vapor had been found in the habitable zone of a star, which you know is a region where liquid water can be present. Since there's water vapor in the atmosphere, astronomers have inferred that there could be water on the surface of the planet, maybe a lot of it. Does this mean that the planet is habitable? It has eight times the mass of the Earth and a radius that's about 2.7 times the size of the Earth. Exoplanet researchers have calculated that it's pretty much impossible to have a planet that's bigger than twice the size of Earth without a very thick atmosphere. And observations show that it has a thick atmosphere of hydrogen and helium, like the surface of Jupiter. It probably has a rocky core, but that's deep down inside an enormous amount of hydrogen, helium, and yes, some water. Not to mention the fact that it orbits around a dangerous flaring red dwarf star, which would be constantly scouring the planet with deadly radiation. What makes this discovery exciting is that astronomers were able to find a planet this small, this close to its star, opening up the possibility for future discoveries. But astronomers continued to study K218b and were able to run the planet through a variety of scientific models to try and figure out what's actually going on there. And they recently came up with three possibilities. It's either a rocky world with a core that's 94% iron with very little water and a very thick atmosphere of hydrogen and helium. Or it's a mini Neptune with an Earth-like core and more than 54% water. Or, and this is the intriguing possibility, a water world with a small Earth-like core and almost 90% water with very little hydrogen and helium. Now let's talk about that third possibility since it opens up some interesting ideas about the habitability of ocean worlds. What if there was a world that had a small rocky core surrounded by almost entirely water? Like, we're talking about oceans that go down for hundreds, maybe even thousands of kilometers. What does that mean for habitability? In a paper published in 2019, astronomers looked at a variety of worlds that have already been discovered with two to four times the size of the Earth. And the prevailing theory is that these are mini Neptunes, 
rocky core is surrounded by thick envelopes of hydrogen gas, totally uninhabitable. But the researchers propose that these are actually water worlds, and they're everywhere. Go down deep enough, and the pressure would be overwhelming. Liquid water would be compressed into exotic forms of ice that don't occur naturally here on Earth, but have been made in the lab. They would act like the Earth's mantle, but completely made of ice. A few hundred kilometers down, this hard layer of ice would completely cut off the surface of the ocean from the rocky core underneath and prevent elements like carbon, iron, and silicon from mixing into the oceans. So clearly we want water, but not too much water. What if you've got deep oceans, a rocky seafloor, but no actual continents? Can you have reasonable temperatures? In order for a planet to be habitable, planetary scientists used to assume that you needed something like Earth with both continents and oceans to allow nutrients to cycle from land into the oceans to support aquatic life. Deep oceans smother volcanoes, stopping them from pushing carbon dioxide directly into the atmosphere to help warm it up. And without rocks on the surface, they don't have a way to draw that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere again to cool back down. But a recent study from the University of Chicago says that might not be the case. They simulated thousands of randomly generated planets and tracked the evolution of their climates over billions of years. They found that about 10% of the water worlds have the right mix of overall chemicals that the ocean and the atmosphere can be in perfect balance, cycling carbon dioxide between the air and water, keeping the temperatures nice and stable. In fact, planets around red dwarf stars might be the ideal candidates, since these stars would give their planets billions and even trillions of years of constant light and warmth after a really turbulent early period. There's increasing evidence that the Earth itself used to be a water world for long periods of time without any solid ground. And we'll get to that in a second. But first, I'd like to thank Luke Wilhelm, Michael Terrell, Brian P. Cox, Jay McNeil, Soren Ryberberg and the rest of our 865 patrons for their generous support. Want our videos early with no ads? Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today. As I said earlier, the earth is mostly covered by water today, but it still has plenty of continents where life was able to thrive. But there's evidence that this wasn't always the case. Geologists were looking at exposed rock formations in Western Australia, which contains very well-preserved portions of the ocean crust from the Archaean Eon, which formed about 3.2 billion years ago. They analyzed the rock and were able to measure the isotopes of oxygen that gave them clues about how the oceans and rocks interacted with each other at that time in history. It seemed to contain higher quantities of the heavier isotopes of oxygen that would normally be drawn by continents across the planet. In other words, at that time in the Earth's history, there were no continents, just oceans of various depths across the entire planet. It was only more recently that the continents themselves formed. The big question, of course, is where did life on Earth come from? The more established idea is that it formed in some kind of nutrient-rich aquatic place on land. But what if there were no continents on the land at all at that time? This means that the alternative explanation that life formed around the volcanic vents in the deep ocean could be more likely. And if life was able to form here on Earth in a purely aquatic environment, that gives hope to the possibility that we'll find life on other ocean worlds out there in the universe. As new telescopes come online and astronomers continue to refine their techniques, it could turn out that habitable zone ocean worlds are far more common than we ever expected. And now the question is, which of these are truly habitable and which are just enormous chunks of sterile water? Keep watching to see how it all unfolds. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here, support the work we do, go to patreon.com slash universe today. And once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and I send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format so that you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up on your audio device? Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. 
This video was focused on ocean worlds located in the habitable zones of their stars, but there's growing evidence that the vast majority of habitable worlds are actually ice worlds like Europa and Enceladus. There could be 1000 times as many of those places compared to planets like Earth. And here's a video that goes into it. 